Hello, hello. Music stopped right at the perfect time. I was just setting the levels and it just stopped right in between the songs. How's it going, everybody? Happy Friday. Hope everybody's week went well. Uh, it was a pretty busy week for me. Um, the uh, We got the kids a, a playhouse, like a two-story wooden playhouse. And that's, we've been working on it for, well, two weeks now or so. Um, but you know, as much time as you have to put into it on the weekdays, but that's taking a lot of my energy. Holy cow. That was a much bigger project than I anticipated. Um, uh, but as far as the stream scenes go, we got, uh, we're, we're pretty close to getting our blender models all hooked up into our scene to where you can do a channel point redemption or a command and it all drops stuff. Um, I have it wired up to within React 3 Fiber, there's something called an instanced mesh. And an instanced mesh is a more performant version of just the mesh, where if you have a single mesh, you can have multiple instances of it rather than like like it's it's a it's a reference to it rather than like a uh an actual second copy or multiple copies. Um, so I think that's going to scale a lot better because we can have a few models and have a hundred instances of it. And it's not going to like destroy my computer while streaming. <laughs> um, uh, the I'm struggling on the reset though. I, I got something working maybe a half hour ago, a uh, half hour uh, before this started and I can get them moving and rotating so I can see a change and it's doing something now before it just everything I tried wasn't having a, an effect on it um so pretty soon that'll work I, th I think we have all of our uh I, th I think the th um commands are all still working I don't believe I broke any of that yeah um, so this, I want to also wire that up with, uh, materials, dynamic materials where somebody could choose from a list and can have different, uh, different looks to it. But right now it's, I think it's just that one default. And I believe I got the events all wired up to it correctly too. Um, and I actually <laughs> ended up switching the whole, uh, setup with the scenes from parcel, which we've had on stream issues with the caching. I, I don't know if it's this specific scenario or if just in general, like the understanding how the cache and the hot reloader is working was just like there, there was situations where we had to like literally remove the dot parcel dash cache folder and it still would stick around. Um, so, I don't know. Uh, so I ended up switching it all to Vite. Because it should be just as fast. Um, and hopefully we run into less issues. Parcel.js does a lot to help you out with bundling. Um, Vite is a little bit more of the um, hands-off in pulling in the modules and stuff for you. So you have to do a little bit more configuration to make sure it's correctly pulling in the right, like ESM and this, these scenes are in a browser, so we can't have any Node.js dependencies. Um, so we ran into a lot of issues with that. <laughs> I ended up just inlining some of the dependencies within the index. Uh, uh, the index.html as script tags and just using them off the window object. The reason being that those packages just weren't set up in a good way to import them and have it all correctly resolve. Um, but it was set up to actually come in with a script tag just fine and pull the non-node based dependencies. 
what can you do? I mean, it's it's a uh, this type of project is something that like it's kind of meant for just me, single users sort of thing. So I mean, if it works, it works, and as long as I understand when it breaks, how to debug that, uh, it's fine. Um, the the goal of that you know kind of the mission behind it is being able to have a place where we can experiment with the 3d um, commands and having these these 3d scenes um and sort of like a callbacks kind of thing it's it's nice to be able to see the progress that you've done and having these commands and the blender models um be able to like be recalled it's a it's kind of a cool callback a little bit of a dopamine hit, you know. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that's where we're at with all that stuff. Ho- hopefully, I can maybe within the next week or two get the last of that all finished up, and we can have um, start getting these models in here. Um, and Maybe we'll end up switching topics for a little bit. We've been doing Blender things, and we've been doing 3.js, WebGL, React 3 Fiber for quite some time now. Um, so we might, we might change it up a little bit. But uh, for probably the next couple of weeks still, we'll do. Um, we'll stick around in the 3D model space. Um, I don't really... I don't really have any React 3 Fiber things to do today, so I, I'm kind of thinking we just do another Blender model. Um, we got a last time we did geometry nodes. We got probably three or four models out of the geometry nodes that we made. Uh, so we we set up a bunch of geometry nodes and we're able to produce models from those and um, save those out. So we'll throw those in the scene once we get this that all set up. Yes, Kitty, you are just looking for attention. He keeps, uh, I don't know if you can see him pawing at me, but he'll stand up and just dab me with his paw. You're so close, buddy. <laughs> You're so close to being on the screen. He doesn't like to go on my lap. The other, uh, other kitty is a, a snuggler. This one is not. Uh, but yeah, we, we have a bit of a hard stop. Um, so I don't think we're going to do t- anything too involved, uh, but we're going to do, we're going to do a blender, blender model today. Um, but we got to decide what, so, um, we did, we've done the geometry nodes where we did a, a Tara, a Taurus, Taurus with some things protruding from it and uh basically like a um what do they call those in in, in the the movies they had all these mines on sea floors that explode when the submarines go by that's pretty much what it looks like uh it's it's like a circle with spiky things um and then we got a star that was what we did last time um and we did a like a coffee cup the, before that, and that was just all hand modeled. We didn't use geometry nodes for that. Um, so I mean, I I would kind of be fine doing a, a model that has a combination of both. Um, maybe maybe not today. We'll see uh, if it makes sense to pull in the geometry nodes. We might, but I, I think we'll just do something by hand. Um, so what could we do that would be interesting? Um, we want to do something a little bit more involved than what we have done, but look around my house here for ideas. Feel free to shout something out if anybody else has in the chat has thoughts. Um, there's, since we're exporting these and putting these in our React 3 Fiber scenes, we can control the materials via like the chat commands. Um, but that doesn't exclude 
the actual using the actual materials that we would put in Blender. So we could do something like um, have a couple materials and one of the three materials on an object is editable. Um, and actually the React 3 Fiber just got, I don't know if it's uh, additional features or if it, it's a, a new thing. Uh, decals. Yes, it must include decals. It is pretty new, so it might not actually be out yet. Um, June. A lot of these are like, how can I do this? Um, the I, th I believe I don't even know how to say this Twitter handle. Um, they had, yeah, they had a demo of it. So let's go ahead and open that up. Yeah, that's so nifty. Whoa. And this is actually another thing that I would like to look at. Uh, Lam Lamina? Um, we, we don't need to like get super in depth with the materials, but I think we have the option to, if we want, um, because it, it would be, it's, it's fun to make the materials dynamic within our react three fiber scene to where the chat commands can edit them. Um, so within Blender, I don't think we need to get too involved with materials. Just keep it in mind as we're building them. Um, I guess they don't have a site for it yet. Uh, Lamina. So this is shaders. And you can layer in shaders is how I understand it, which sounds pretty cool. Um, these are clickable, right? Yeah. So this uses what what are these? Bunny. Oh, it is actually using React 3 Canon. Interesting. Where's the here? Okay, so Lamina is coming in with depth layer material. So that, oh, I guess it's the actual bunny. Oh, well, yeah, we're so we're looking at the the bunny.tsx. So it's it's the actual bunny itself. So it must be doing. Oh, that's really cool. So I don't know if we can actually do shaders with this, but we can set things like. lighting and colors oh matte cap so matte cap is short for material capture i believe um and the like this this command That is a material um, from a matte cat library. 
so it seems like you can use those directly in the as layers so you can layer on multiple textures um with things like noise so you can potentially get some interesting uh interesting looking materials and like uh, these what do they call them? Mar marble i guess whoa i didn't even realize i could do that whoa that's that is trippy i dig it so the i presume that has something to do with like the fresnel depth layer material or is that blob maybe that's blob um here we can go well i guess i don't need to dig into that much, that much but we've so we've got uh, what five blobs Yeah, so those must be blobs, yep. So if you look at the blob, let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger since we're starting to dig into it a little bit. Um, yeah, so there's like, the, we can set a material with uh, transmissiveness. So every object has the ability to transmit light or let or have light transmit through it um but it's kind of just like on a slider so glass obviously transmits more light through it um but there's different like opacities of glass which will transmit less light through it um and then we get the displays which as it transmits th through it the light doesn't go straight through it it can fan out uh depending on material properties and such but it, it looks like you can actually describe all of that as layers presumably with shader stuff in here um and i i gotta imagine that you can pull your own shaders in for this So advanced use. Can inject functionality that is the basic layer extension syntax. We can, so this common use case, adding non-uniform options to layers that directly sub out shader code. Um, so something like this, there is um let's see if i remember this uh wgsl i think it is um the newer the the newer spec that's coming out is web gpu which does the 3d rendering and there's a shader language called wgsl that you can write and basically use directly. So it seems like you can actually write WGSL. I'm assuming that's what that is, and then use it directly, which is which is pretty nifty. Um, so that might be something that we look at. But today is not that day. Okay, so Blender models. Um, what do we? We've got probably about a half hour. Um, just see if we can idea eight a little bit. What well, what do they have in their demos here? Yeah, and that, that's so the, that those little engravings on the inside there are uh, decals. Really nifty stuff. I don't want to sign in right now. Go away. Guess we're done. The I think one of the fun things about the decals though. We're hooked into the Twitch IRC, um, 
we can put the avatars. So somebody could run a command and we could put a decal of their avatar on the actual 3D object, which would be sort of fun. Um, I haven't seen anybody do anything like that. Uh, so that, I, th I think that would be really fun to do. Um, so that might be the next couple weeks playing around with that kind of thing, those kind of things, materials and we we might we might sit on the WGSL stuff for a little bit and have that we'll wait for that to settle out a little bit because the spec for WGPU is still kind of in transit it seems. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think it'll be fun. So models, um, what should we do? Like what? What would be fun? to have drop in a scene like out of the sky. Um, I don't know if I can do anything super organic yet. I guess we could do like a, a chair or something. That would be sort of a unique shape that would have some fun physics, I think. Yeah, chair. Yeah, let's do a chair. Um, and I'm not thinking like a, like a sofa or something. I'm thinking like, um, the kitchen, cl classic kitchen table chair, I guess, like the classic wooden chair with the spokes. Um, and I suppose actually speaking of spokes, we could do, cause now we knew how, know how to do radius type things. We can, with geometry nodes, we could potentially do something like a bike wheel. Um, but that might be a future one. Okay, so we if if we're gonna do, I gotta remember all these shortcuts now. Shift A is it? yeah. Um, so if we're gonna do a chair and we want, we need a surface that you sit on. We need legs coming down and then the back. Um. The back of it is kind of like, I think we can do like a torus with spokes coming down. Um, and then I guess the actual chair part itself, maybe we start with that. Um, Do we do, I think maybe we start with a sphere actually for the chair. Cause a lot of the chairs, like the front of it tends to be kind of rounded. Um, and I think rather than trying to get that round shape with a square, it's easier to do it from a sphere and we can flatten parts of the sphere. Um, so we're gonna do, I guess we'll do a sir. Well, that's not what I want. We don't want a circle. We want a sphere, I guess. Um, we'll move it up a little bit. We need to scale it. And we only want to scale it in a single direction. So that's still pretty like, like I, I would like a, like deeper edges there. Um, but I mean, we, we can kind of, I think I could deal with that for now. Um, And honestly, I kind of don't mind the circle. Uh, let's see if we can flatten out the edges a little bit though. Um, let's go into edit mode. We want to slide a vertex along. So, so we've got, if we want to make some of these flat, we can potentially remove vertices to where a chunk of it then ends up being flat. 
um, connect. So, this, so the question then becomes, are we going to look to edit the vertex, vertex or are we going to look to edit the edge? Um, I think, I think we kind of want to do connect, connect vertices by their selection order. No, what is rep? Rip polygons and move the results. Flatten angles of selected vertices. So that would be you, I'm presuming you select a vertice and then you can kind of have it squish like that. Um, blend in shape from a shape key. Mm. Let's try this rip. Rip polygons and move the result. Extend vertices and move the result. So if we do rip. Oh, did we actually uh, switch into wireframe? Um, I'm going to go straight top down. Oops. And I guess I want to do something like these vertices. And I'm going to hold shift to also select those. I think that's pretty symmetrical there. Um, I add in these two. I think that'll give us a pretty good uh, looking like flat edge. So we'll rip. What does this rip do? Cannot rip. Okay. Input pending. Huh. Okay. So maybe it maybe it makes sense to do something with the edge then. Um we could also look up what this rip. Let's let's look that up real quick. Blender rip vertices. Hmm. So we're actually like taking the part. Got it. Okay. That's definitely not what we want to do. Um, subdivide, screw, bevel, extrude. I'm tempted to say delete them and then just fill. Cut geometry along a plane. Use other objects, other object outlines and butters. Actually the bisect, um, did we use that last time? Or a couple times ago? I feel like we might have. Um, And this this knife cuts. I feel like slide an edge loop along a mesh. Shear select items. What does that look like? Oh. Okay. Okay. That wasn't the grip that I wanted. I mean, that's not what I'm looking for, but it's good to know that that, what that's doing. And here's the rip region, edge slide. What does this edge slide look like? Oh, so I'm assuming we got to select an edge. It actually does kind of feel like edge slide is the way to go. All right, so we're going to go up on top again. We're going to grab, we're on edge selecting mode right now, so we can grab 
few of them here, I think. Um, and we'll do the same on this side. The selection is kind of odd sometimes, I feel like, but um, it doesn't seem like we can actually do both at the same time. So let's do let's do a couple of these. Oh, it doesn't. It doesn't like uh, that selection. Doesn't. So if if we zoom in a little bit here so we can kind of see what's going on. Um, it's actually sliding it up back and forth, like up and down along that edge. So I don't know that that's actually what we want to do. I'm going to try deleting. Um, whoop, deleting and filling back in. Uh, if we do, so we're still on edge select. If we get a rounded thing and we slice so it here maybe I feel like this is a good place to delete um, and we'll do the same here no oh, why are we doing extrude Um, edges. So if we are drawing something back from, I feel like this is quite symmetrical here. Yeah, I guess if we draw that across, we have deleted this. Edges. Go away, all you edges. Okay. Um, so if we're drawing back from here, we kind of want to circle into this. Flatten it out in here again. Why is it not? I, I feel like this selection here is... Maybe I have to hold shift for it to do what I'm expecting it to. Okay. Um, we'll do this one as well. Okay. So now if we're drawing it straight back, I think we actually end up taking these off too. And this, and this. Okay, so we kind of got a hole in there now, so we need to fill it. Modeling joke. <laughs> um, a really bad one. <laughs> um, we, we basically have a hole, so we, we want to... And the, I think what I tend to get stuck on too is the way that I would deal with this in other modeling programs would be to like draw lines and then do fills. So like I would say add an edge. I guess I can, can I actually add edges directly? Mesh edge extrude. Is there an actual like add edge? Ooh. Mark selected edges as freestyle feature edges. I'm not sure what that means, but I feel like it's probably worth looking into. Um
I think we're going to do a little bit of so so what I'm what I'm imagining is sort of a rounded front end and maybe we can we can squish that in somehow is there a I guess there's a smooth that's a sheer spin bevel inset and maybe this ends up do we jump into sculpting for this? Um, but what I'm, what I'm imagining is sort of like a triangle with a rounded end on one side and another rounded end on the other side. Um, so if we draw like a straight line back here, we can probably cut out something like this. What am I, um, edge select still? Come on. Nope. There we go. Let's get rid of those edges. Um, get rid of all these. So I guess we're gonna kind of go here and then something like this. So if we get rid of these, if we go from here to here, and then here, I guess here did like this maybe. Got a couple of edges floating around here. Okay, so we have to figure out how to basically like fill those gaps back in. Um, and there is within the edges, we can do like fills, um, and we can do slides. Yeah. So like fill would fill between fill a selected edge loop with faces. So we could select that whole loop and get a face in there. Um, We can insert new faces, but that's on a face. Solidify. What is this poly build? Whoa, okay, okay. So if I got this vertices selected, what do I, oh, I can move it, okay. Oh. So if it's red, it actually deletes it. And if I grab an edge, what can I do with the edge? So I can like freeform extrude from this. It's not what I wanna do though. Um, I do, I think, want to Pull this out a little bit. Whoop. I'm definitely finding myself forgetting to press shift. Um, So what does that need to line up with? I guess it needs to. I guess that's fine right there. I'll move this one up a little bit. So we've essentially kind of compensated for that sharp angle there. What are you doing here? Did I add an extra? Ah. 
Oh, there's like a an extra uh, triangle in here or something. Oh, I did. Yep. So if I get a hover, this, I want that to go away. And that, and that. And I've got an extra vertice here. So it seems like it's pretty easy to like create extra vertices and stuff. Um, I don't know how big of a fan I am of that. So it kind of seems like what we can do is if I do this, I can freeform extrude, um, extrude at cursor. I'm curious if there's like a snap. Ah, here we go. Okay. So if I hold the middle mouse, now I get axes. So I can like extrude along axes. So if I did something like this, it's not a perfect match. Um, why is it moving so slow? So just because I'm super zoomed in. Yeah, I think it's just because I'm real zoomed in. Yeah, you can see you can see there's two of them here. So what we can do, I think, is do a select. Um, we've got edges selected right now. So let's do vertices. Um, and select these vertices and these vertices. And I believe we can say connect vertices together. Connect vertices, connect selected vertices of faces, splitting, splitting the face. Connect selected vertices. I feel like that's uh, kind of confusing the way that's written. I thought there was a way to combine vertices that are very close to each other. Snap, symmetrize. Oh, that's kind of nifty. We probably want to use that actually. Now that I've changed that one side completely. Um, oh, here's transform. Okay, skin resize, scale selected vertices, skin redi. Warp, warp vertices around a corner, push pull selected items. Move selected items outward in a spherical shape around geometric center. I kind of feel like I need like a, a demo of these commands. I wonder if there's a video of just like demoing all of these commands in use. So the like you can see here, I've got two, I've got two vertices um, or two uh, edges here. So if I would delete that edge, we've got a bunch of vertices. Um, maybe I just focus on one right now. Is there like a uh, combine or something? Snap to, um, okay. We want to snap to vertices, snap with closest. So if I do this and I do poly, can I snap my snap one around? Oh, and there's a create quads. Automatically split edges and triangles domain quad topology. Interesting. There we go. Um, it still looks like I've got two there. So 
So it might be nice to clean some of that up. I just looked. Interesting. Okay. So right now I've like I've got this snap button on 3D cursor median. I haven't I haven't played around with these too much. Transform orientations. Interesting. So right now we have it set to snap to vertices. And we can we can set other snaps as well. Back face culling. Exclude back facing geometry from snapping. Snap onto itself in edit mode only. Okay. Align rotation to target. And then we want to affect move rotator scale. I think we just want move. They're toggleable. Um, so now here, if we would like select this vertice, um, and we do a move, we can free firm move it to, come on little one. All right, so we, we've got pan. Why aren't you panning? I feel like some of the, like, if you're too zoomed in and you're, you don't pan anymore is... How, how do people work on small models? Like, it, I, I, I don't understand. How can how can you possibly work on small models if you like can't move around within it? All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna just kill this face or kill this edge rather, and this one here as well. Yeah, like once I've zoomed in a, a certain amount, I just can't pan anymore. What if that's a setting? Ooh, auto merge. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Okay. So now it should you can see it you can see it here. Auto merge ver vertices. Um so I guess I kind of want to do a sharp edge there. So if I would if I would say move. Um, we'll switch to vertice selection. Uh, we will move this and move it up. We will select this one and move it up. And then we should be able to do the reverse. Select these and move them down. What is... What is my scale here? Like, I think we could probably bump it up to this. I also need to look into what UVs are. Yeah, you recalculate the UV unwrap. So let's try bumping up to 0.1. I don't know if changing all these is going to trigger it. Oh, there we go. They're now triggered. So it auto merged them now. Okay. Um, I like, I like. I think I'm actually going to play around with that. Because we can now do something like this then. I definitely like this kind of workflow here. The The way that I tend to think about modeling, this actually works really well for me. Um, and we, we could do the, uh, oh, that's not gonna work for us, the symmetry part. Uh, can we try the symmetrize real quick? 
where was that? Um, we are, we want a mirror on the Y. So if we do this, So there's the one moving right there, and then all the way up there, that one's also moving. Um, so we don't want the Y. I guess we want to do it along the X. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. I'm liking this, this workflow here for what I'm uh, trying to accomplish. Um, so we move this one down a little bit. We move this one out a little bit. Um, this is all kind of funky now because the setup that we used has gone away. Or the, like the structure that we had there has gone away. Um, I don't know if those are actually like combining. Can we can we clean this up now? Still a little bit up in the air. Let's take you down a little bit. Um, I'm thinking that actually looks pretty decent. We're going to take these, pull these down just a tad and we'll, uh, do the same. Oh, we get, we do need to turn off this. Uh, I don't know if the summit mirroring, what do they call it? Symmetrized mirroring. Um, that's having an effect here, but let's turn it off for the moment. Um, so I'm going to select these. I'm going to move these up. They should auto merge. There we go. Um, we'll do an edge fill. Uh, we're getting close to time. So we'll do, a, we'll do an edge fill here and we'll get us a, a solid piece of geometry that we can work with. Um, we're going to switch to edge selection mode. Um, we are looking to grab and fill this hole here along this edge. Um, so we can do something like this. Oh, let's go into selection mode. I think it's that maybe. Um, and we should be able to do face and fill. Now, how did it fill it? Took it all back to that one point, which is kind of funky. If we switch to this mode, you can see it a little bit better, I think. Um, so definitely to give it a weird edge, it's not filling it all along. Um, it's not like a hull, it's more of a straight line, like line of sight fill almost. So we might need to add in a couple extra edges there to get it to fill in the way that we're expecting. Um, but honestly, I'm kind of, kind of okay with where that's at. I'm going to, I'm going to undo it. I don't like that fill. Uh, we'll do one more thing here. Oh, let's switch it to wireframe. Um, the front edge, the front lip is pretty drastic. It bends in quite a bit. So what I would like to do is if I go in this view, I am on edge mode. Um, if I switch to vertice, zoom in a little bit here, I want to take these here and move them down. It gives her, give ourselves just a little bit extra depth here. Um, you could see a couple of them did auto merge on us which might give us a little funky thing going on here. A little bit. But I'm fine just dealing with it like this. So that gives us just a little bit of a deeper lip.
Well, we definitely get it, didn't get as far as I was hoping, um, but we can continue to kind of play around with it. Um, we might actually pick this up next time. Uh, so we'll go ahead and save it. Um, it's It's definitely one of those things where the amount of time it takes to model something is like the amount of hours people spend modeling is just it makes sense to make a chair and just keep reusing it everywhere <laughs> because it took a good chunk of time to model that chair so like i can i can totally understand why um like asset libraries have become a thing because making if you're making a game or a movie and making assets for all of this stuff oh boy oh well, um, I think that's where we're going to call it. Uh, thanks for stopping by, everybody. Um, we will likely continue with our model um, and start to get into potentially maybe Lamina and some of those uh, material things. Hopefully, I can get this instanced mesh thing set up in the scene so we can get some... Uh, um, pretty cool effects going on effects effects whatever um and dropping some of these model and let them do fun physics things on stream but next time so have a happy friday thanks for stopping by uh and we'll see you in the next one bye